Dear editors who ended a relationship with their best friend, what was your breaking point? He promised me he would pay my rent with our business profits while I went out of town but instead bought a truck with our money and told my landlord that I had the money but refused to pay. My family ended up homeless. Whether we spoke or hung out was fully dependent on me initiating it. So when I decided to step back, we stopped talking. For some context, by the time we stopped talking, it was the end of high school and we had both become completely different from each other, so this wasn't sudden. I think I tried to hang on to the friendship simply because it was the longest one I had, which unfortunately wasn't reciprocated. I can relate. I'm not even that outgoing but it hurts when I am the one holding the friendship and the only one initiating a conversation. Realized I was the one keeping the friendship alive and she didn't really care. She's been passive aggressive and had lied and gaslighted in the past but she had become ruder and more dismissive lately and I was too angry with her to let it go. Looking back it was a long time coming. It really sucks when that happens how you basically feel like you're making all the plans just to get blown off and then have them complain to you about how they get blown off by other people. He had a friend that stole from me, defended the friend instead of backing me. At that point you might as well have carried the other side when he stole it. Who else is here wondering why their best friend left because they were ghosted and never got any closure? I guess my crippling sadness over my ex bestie, who I haven't talked to in like 5-6 years is good for something. When I realized her childhood family was too dysfunctional and she was taking her anger frustration out on me since mine was not, she was always belittling me and talking over me and I just realized it wasn't worth it. She was funny and we liked the same things but if I spent more than 2 hours with her, I came home feeling worn down. I've been there. It's that moment of realizing I wasn't all that introverted. I just had terrible friends. She had a tendency of being selfish, while making me feel guilty that I was the selfish one. After spending my wedding day focused on her drama, I kept her at arm's length. When the birth of my first child was also overshadowed by her drama, I cut her loose. Gaslighting is terrible. I still worry I'm being too self-centered. That is terrible. Your special day made into someone else's drama day. They became a rim addict and blamed everyone else for their problems. I tried everything I could to help them for over a year. I ruined a lot of my own life trying to be there for them. It was a hard lesson to learn that sometimes the people that you really love and care about are beyond help. It hurts to remember the person that she used to be and admit to myself that the person I knew is gone. I got sober and turned my life around. She wanted to stay in the same spot on her couch, pretend her issues didn't exist, and make someone else responsible for her sobriety. She was firmly entrenched in the belief she was a victim and couldn't comprehend being in charge of her own life. It got to the point I was having anxiety before I went to hang out with her and I couldn't take it anymore. That is terrible. I hope she is sober now though. Stole $400 from me when he found out the girl he liked actually liked me. We were in our mid 20s. High school never ends. She turned out to be a pathological liar. Lied about having an abortion. Made it out to be my fault. Lied about the D-list celebrity she was dating. Getting into Harvard. Made a mutual friend believe I dong blocked her. Not only did I cut her off, but had to cut off our mutual friend because she continued to try to fix her. Wooer wouldn't come to my wedding even though he introduced my wife and I. Tried to explain to him there was nothing I wanted more other than for him to be there. His girlfriend at the time didn't want to go because she was insecure with her appearance. We haven't seen each other since. My wife and I will be celebrating our 33rd anniversary soon. Same thing happens to me. Asked him to be at my wedding a year previous and he said yes. Asked where he was on the day and he said he had double booked on the same day. So he decided that his date night with his new, now XGF, was more important than my wedding. Not spoken to him since. She never made time for me. She quit her job to be a full time Lularo mom boss and apparently doesn't have time anymore. Truth be told, I miss her kids more. I hate it but I held on longer than I should have. I last saw her oldest daughter a year ago. I miss them so much. In the space of a few months, my mother died, my first marriage imploded, 
I moved 3k miles away from everything I knew, having a miscarriage in a tiny town motel along the way, after 3 weeks of ghosting me, after 25 years of supposed BFness, she told me, though I'd never complained or asked advice or for support BC I am overly self contained weirdo, that my life choices were stressing her out and she couldn't be friends with me, she reached out about 2 years later via email and although that was 8 years ago, I'm still too angry to respond. This is horribly familiar. I am so sorry. My GF at the time and I both did something that hurt her feelings. I apologized the next day, but my GF never did. She decided to forgive my GF but not me. Then my GF left me to get with her instead. Gay best friend in high school. I came out to him as B. He said no you're not. You're gay or you're straight. You have to choose. My ex-boyfriend said this to me in passing. Like, I didn't even say anything to prompt it. He just said out of nowhere being B is greedy. You should just pick one or the other. It was weird. I got belittled and bullied more and more eventually. Friends in common would lie and make stories that she would buy and gossip even more about. I truly loved her. But she did hurt me so much at the end I could not take it anymore and decided to close the chapter. Never felt better since then. Now I'm very cautious with my friendships and set boundaries. Wasn't a bad guy. But I eventually realized I couldn't have someone in my life that compared our friendship to ones I had with others. Wow that is so true. House got robbed in college and somebody made off with like 3k that I was saving up on tips. Found out 2 years later it was him and the twisted part was he was there for me the entire time from like 30 minutes after I had found my house and called it in. Never suspected him till I found out and it all made sense. Sick narcissistic freak. He'll eventually freak up his own life without me wishing ill upon him. I don't need that kind of poison in my life. I'm trying to be a better person every day not worse. She was my friend from elementary school. We basically grew up together as babies all through high school and remained in contact through college by hanging out in between semesters. Fast forward to our mid-twenties. She was attending med school on the east coast but I knew she was interesting in getting a residency back home in California. Meanwhile I had made a new friend who worked as a nurse in a very well regarded hospital in northern California that was known for only hiring employees through internal references. So while we were on winter break I invited new friend out to one of our group dinners so we could socialize and maybe they could connect up. I introduced them to each other at a dinner and my childhood best friend spent most of the dinner just passive aggressively crapping on new friend. Phrases like only a nurse were tossed around. As humiliating as it was for me, I knew new friend felt even worse. Looking back, I am ashamed that I did not defend new friend as much as I should have as she was the odd one out of the group. Later as I was preparing to drop childhood best friend off at her house, I drove her to the dinner at the restaurant. I overheard her talking to a mutual friend from high school about how rude and inconsiderate I was to invite new friend over when it was their time. I ghosted her the next day. I dropped 15 years of friendship without an ounce of remorse. I didn't think I owed her an explanation. My former best friend was, oof, we are mostly on good terms now. But there was a time where we freaking hated each other's guts. He had anger issues and couldn't think straight when he got mad. I had the horrible tray of always wanting the last laugh. The man says something stupid. I correct him, then he gets mad. Then I get mad back because I didn't want him having the satisfaction of thinking he's right. And we got off at each other. The man even stabbed me with a pencil in the eye once. I'd be half blind if it weren't for the fact that he wasn't paying attention and stabbed me with the eraser end and didn't hit me dead center in the eye. Just very slightly to the side of it. That was the final. Final breaking point. Again. He and I have gotten over that and we're on good terms, and he's managed his anger while I got rid of my stupid little mentality. Thankfully, I have a new current best friend, and she's the most relatable person I know, and he's doing well in the friend apartment too, so happy ending. I'm glad it's a happy ending, I didn't know where it was going xd. Walked in on him freaking my wife. 25 years of friendship down the toilet for some pee. Now to answer some questions. Yeah I clocked him, divorced her. Got a really good divorce attorney. During the mediation she tried to get alimony from me playing the victim. 
The cell phones were in my name so my lawyer had no problem getting all the texts between the two of them and during that mediation my lawyer started reading them off and about halfway down the page her lawyer said to stop. She got the house. I didn't want it even though I probably could have got it if I wanted so due to the circumstances. Divorce got finalized and I walked away free. I did go down a deep dark hole drinking away my problems. Left the job I was at and started a new career. Talk about turnabout being fair play a few years after the incident I was at one of my favorite watering holes and I guess she was driving by seen my jeep in front of the bar walked in with a black eye. I looked at her and said so I guess things with you and scumbag are going well she told me she lost everything and was sorry and then asked me for money. I laughed at her and told her not a chance. I met a wonderful woman and had my daughter who is now 5 years old in the light of my life. So to both my exes, friend and wife thank you. They became extremely egotistical and cocky. I told them so and called them out. They got pee at me and said I was just jealous of how cool they were. This was year 6. Glad I got rid of him. Continued to drink and agitate his unchecked bipolar disorder despite my pleas and everyone else's pleas who loved him. He became violent, risked my own safety and health many times, and started hanging around shady people. For a long time I blamed myself for the spiral he set into motion. What if I had been more patient? Gotten his family involved when he started getting really bad. Just anything. I have finally found peace with the fact my own mental health is just as bad and I did the best I could. The person I knew him to be is now dead. And although I'm on nearly every day for that, I truly hope the new person he is finds his way in life. I just don't wish to be around to see it. Whatever you're going through OP, I wish you the best. I hope that you, and him, are now on a healthier path. I wish you the best, and thank you for the well wishes. I have a great friend, but it's like every time we talk it's a questionnaire. No real conversation. I don't want to end the friendship but she's kind of sensitive and I dk how to tell her otherwise without hurting her. Addiction. I tried to support him at first. I confronted him. Took part in an intervention. Checked up on him. All I got in return was someone who lied to my face and stole whatever he could get off me. If you ever had to deal with an addict that you loved you know how mentally and emotionally draining it can be. I have no regrets. I put in as much as I could. I'm not going to harm my life in order to save his. If he ever gets clean I will be there for him but I will do so cautiously. Unfortunately I feel like the next time I see him he will be in his casket. You are not alone. I know exactly what you've been through. She had this massive crush on a very nice guy who tried to let her down gently the best that he could. I don't remember the exact details, but I started taking his side because she was becoming overly obsessive with him despite me trying to convince her to move on and that he wasn't interested. She stopped talking to me for at least a month. The nail in the coffin was the month I started dating my, now, wife, who she did not get along with at all. She constantly played the victim in whatever negative interaction she had and it just wore me out to the point where I intentionally started letting go. Completely lying about everything he was my best man and then a year later he's lying about absolutely everything just got sick of it and stopped talking to him. Then he acts all weird like I'm ditching my girlfriend really odd. Whoa. We were both larger gay guys but I had a better dating record pool despite being more reserved and heavier than he was. He started to treat me like the ugly friend that he was doing a favor for when we went out on the town. After I ended the friendship, he tried to reconnect via a new friend and ended up just alienating the guy from us both. It was sad because he'd obviously lost his sobriety and wanted to blame it on how I treated him. It taught me a lot about how to deal with manipulative people and I'm better off for it. When she made a glib comment about suicidal people who in her opinion should have killed themselves already, knowing that I deal with depression and chronic suicidal ideation, I immediately stopped responding to her texts and haven't spoken to her in 3 years. I hope you're doing okay now. One word, M. They admitted they'd been a heavy M addict. I just assumed he was fricked up on something else or he was just overtly hyper. He was trying to make an affair happen with my son's mom, inviting her to keep him company on a long drive to this job he had at the time. I knew this because she told me about it and how it made her uncomfortable that he would call the house, when people still hand landlines, asking for me at times he fully freaking knew I was at work, 
It sucks because his now wife was my best friend in high school for a while and I never once though about her as anything but a friend because I met her through him as the girl he was crazy about. Like friends are supposed to behave. In that sense I lost two good friends since hanging with her would mean him being in my life. After one of our mutual close friends unexpectedly passed away, ex-friend said some pretty horrendous stuff to me in a text message that pushed me to attempt to take my own life. I was in a pretty dark place at the time due to postnatal depression and bereavement, so my ability to brush off her cruelty was impaired. I haven't heard from her since. She doesn't know the impact she had. I'm still here because of some random guy who was driving past and grabbed me to stop me from jumping. I'm doing much better now. When I found out that he was going behind my back and was trying to gash up on my girl. But what the stupid mother didn't know was that she actually told me about it. She did something very hurtful and when I told her it hurt me she said that it was mean spirited of me to tell her that she hurt my feelings. Then I started to think about it and realized that she never took responsibility for anything she did. She had to be the hero in every scenario, but if she couldn't have hero she'd take victim. I started to clue into a lot of things like how she would surround herself with people who she thought she looked good next to and if things were going well for one of her friends she would be visibly annoyed. She would stand on your shoulders to make herself feel tall. It was exhausting and I'm so glad that I don't have to be around her anymore. He was just a turd. Overly sarcastic. Not the kind that is flattering and funny. The kind that was always a tear down. Outed my personal information and constantly lied about me. Hit me a number of times and told my secrets to anyone that would listen and to this day stalks me because he's got nothing better to do. And told my secrets to anyone that would listen. This is the one thing I don't freaking miss. One bit. Reading that just reminded me of how bad my ex best was with this. And I never learned my lesson. Half the dang town would know my business because, despite him promising not to do so, he would spread stuff I said in privacy to everyone. <laughs> Honestly not as dramatic as a lot of the others here, just a lot of small things that slowly created more and more of a divide. One night he cancelled some plans and I decided the relationship wasn't worth it anymore. I got pregnant unexpectedly. I was freaking out because I'm already disabled. And at that point I didn't feel like I had any job skills. I worried out loud to her that I was going to have to rely on financial aid. She told me only awful people were on any form of government assistance, including the fact that my college was paid for thanks to my dad's service in the navy, and I needed to abort. That accepting help meant I was a terrible mom and my kid would never break the cycle I would start by doing that. I just left the table, figuratively and literally. Haven't spoken since. She sounds disgusting. Hope you and your kid are doing fine. Kind of wasn't me who left the friendship but I made sure to disappear all evidence of me in her life. W were pretty mismatched in the first. She is 10 years older than me but she was pretty immature so we got along fine. Until I got a boyfriend and lost my virginity first. I started spending more time with my boyfriend and a few mutual friends our age. One day, I agreed to go to dinner with her after going to the movies with my BF and some friends. The movie ended a few minutes later than listed and I texted her the moment the lights turned on. She got all hissy and mad and went on an entire self-pity national tour about my disrespectful behavior towards her. She took the bus home that day without waiting for me. She ignored my texts and refused to come out of her room when I went across the street to check on her. Eventually I had enough of her bratty behavior and stopped all contact with her. I even specifically moved out of the neighborhood when my lease was up. I told her I can't stand by and watch her boyfriend physically abuse her new puppy and lock her two indoor outdoor cats inside a basement with no light. Apparently I was way out of line and had no idea what I was talking about. I have had a few dogs and cats and I just can't sit back and watch stuff like that. Friend of 10 years or not. Report the situation to animal control. Frick those people. The animals need help. I've been in this situation and it blows but the animals get help. My best friend left my friend group and that's when I realized I was practically knees deep in pure toxicity at that friend group. I followed my friend's footsteps and stopped hanging out with them. Now I have a dope friend group that is significantly less toxic. In the middle of a fight she told me I would end up like my 
depressed and suicidal. Brothers. She was always draining and emotionally abusive, but talking about my family with such a negative tone was a step too far. She became distant and acted weird around me. Luckily unfortunately my uncle passed, unfortunately, and his funeral was on the same day as her birthday sleepover, luckily, and I chose to go to the family funeral instead of the sleepover than that is how I just stopped seeing her hanging out with her. Whoa. He lived out on a farm and he fricked his horse, a mare, it wasn't a mister, hand situation. He told me about it and at first I thought he was joking and brushed it off. Over time it became pretty clear he absolutely was not joking so I just kinda quietly pieced the frick out and never spoke to him again. What? 10 years ago we were in a band together and lived in the same house. Then we weren't. I still regret not having his friendship even though he was a dong. Finally being confronted with the reality that I had given up all of who I was for the stability of being with them and wasn't receiving back what I needed. I was going through severe depression, just couldn't muster the energy to even shower. She kept asking to hang out and I told her I wasn't feeling well. My depression is consuming me. And she said well we all go through things in life. If you were a real friend, you'd take time out of your day to make sure I was okay. So I got really worried that something bad happened. I apologized and asked her what was wrong and she said that the guy she's cheating on her bf with isn't being attentive enough. Anyway, stopped being her friend and continued wallowing in my depression. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.